Hey everyone, welcome back. Shark here with an exciting 1v1 on the map Twin Beaches between two top 50 players. Playing as the Brits is Finn Golfin, aka Blind Guardian, who's ranked number 40, and playing as the DAC is Alpenwell out of Germany, who's ranked number 33. Helping me cast this one is my buddy Stealth Elf, who always brings a lot of energy and humor to the cast. Also, really interesting use of the Australian Defense Battle Group in this match to try to counter the DAC. Looking forward to the conversation in the comments. As always, links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll on to the video. Hey everyone. So just to orient you all real quick, uh, we've got Blind Guardian, aka Finn Golfin, with the Brits uh, on the west end of the bottom of the map. And then at the top of the map right now, on the east side, we've got Alpenwell. And he's uh, he's starting right out with Bersalieri. Stealth, when we loaded this one up, uh, you said you really enjoy this map. Uh, yeah, a lot. So this is a, I'm not a big 1v1 uh, person, but whenever I do play 1v1s, I always win Twin Beaches. And uh, what I what I like to put an emphasis on is towards the uh, the top of the map here on the north side, there's uh, two double munitions here, 16 each, and it's quite spicy for someone like me who likes to play the USF. Um, I definitely go very, very heavy um, with uh, a lot of rangers and the, the upgrades for their weapons, which, as you know, is very pricey. But with these two double munitions that I can grab, I mean, it's almost like, you know, <laughs> just a little icing on the cake for amount of stuff that I can give them. Yeah, I mean, this is an extremely high resource map and really rewards people that get good map control. Um, like you pointed out, two double munitions on the, the north side of the map. And then five total uh, fuel points, uh, all medium fuel points. Bristolieri pushed off immediately by the Vickers. The Blind Guardians locked in Aussies here. Um, and so he has his first kangaroo squad in support of the Vickers. Meanwhile, Alpenwell going for a double crotch shoots and, and the Bersilieri. Um So both players uh, going relatively heavy anti-infantry at the start, at least with the battle groups. Um, I believe it was Drake who said that she is a runner, she is a track star. He'd be uh, running all over this map with all these motorcycles and bursty of Larry. He's going to have some serious map presence here. Yeah. Pretty interesting that uh, um, Blind Guardian here locks in Aussies. I've heard a lot of uh, controversial things about the um, the Australian light infantry sections, uh, mainly because they're so expensive and they have no AT answer. What do you yeah. think about that? It's, it's interesting to go Aussies at the start. Uh, as the Brits against Dak, because you expect the Dak to play heavily with light vehicles. Um, so he has to have a plan come up. A second Aussie squad on the field. Um, and then, as a side note, we were talking about the high resource output in this map. Uh, Alpenwell's already got his uh, tier one, uh, or he had it being. Yep, there it is. It's built. Um, so, with the crowd shoots and all this capping power. Um, really doing a good job spreading out the map, and he's got three of the five fuel points under his control. Meanwhile, yes, you can tell... Yes, seriously dominating here, for sure. And we've even got a machine gun here going up. Uh, oh, he's actually retreating. He's seeing the flank. Look, that's some seriously good uh, heads up heads up right here. Uh, showing exactly how um, you know cognitive these high-level players are being able to like notice when these flanks are happening. Yeah, and uh, one crowd shoots in uh, on the south side of the map getting pushed off by the Aussies. So they're not anti-vehicle, but their rifle's doing a great job penetrating these ultralights. Uh, so it's a good counter uh, to the initial initial push, but Alpenwell's got good map control. And you called it, he's got MG34 out now, because he's worried about the Aussies swarming him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, honestly, I think the machine gun's a good call here. If Dak had access to a sniper, I'd probably do that too, since Aussies are really expensive to reinforce as well. Anything to bleed your opponent is going to be really good here uh, against the Brits, especially when they go to such an uh, such lengths to to spam out these expensive infantry units. You see him actually having three kangaroos out, uh, meaning that he actually is using them as his mainline infantry, uh, which is very very risky, but very rewarding if you get embedded. Yeah. So he's got enough fuel. Uh, for his net for his tier two building, all right. And the Humber counters some of the DAC light vehicles uh, fairly well. Another oh, MG34, interestingly. Oh my goodness, that's oh. now. And maybe, Usually you see that out of the Vermont players. Yeah, maybe he uh, plans on leaning on the uh, the two pounder AT gun when he gets that out. Oh, that this could be one. true. That could be true. It has some seriously good rate of fire too, especially to start penetrating these like two fifties and other light vehicles like eight rides that come out. Yeah. Oh, he is going for the uh, support, the fire support elements upgrade. 
All right, so maybe we'll see a flak pack here shortly. He's got the fuel for it. He just needs a little bit more manpower. And that's and the these uh, mines are going down here for sure to hopefully catch out these uh, crowd shoots and uh, running around. It's really smart that he's already got these mines out on these VPs and these munitions points. Yeah, Panzer Pios haven't been upgraded with the Minesweeper. They've been putting some mines down as well. Mm. Like I was like I was talking about, I mean, look at this map control, all because of these uh, two, this Bursalarium, excuse me, and the uh, two motorcycles, and, and there's the flak drilling uh, coming out here from the uh, light support company, as you even, like you called it. Yeah. Man, this is pretty brutal. You got the crotch shooting with Vet1 and his tracer ability. Really bleeding these Aussies and then taking the cutoff. And they're going to try to recap it, but the crotch shoots are going to come back and push. Uh, really burn those those kangaroos down. Second squad I mean, I mean, just in. look at his manpower. I mean, it's like always that it's never going above 200. I mean, these Australians are getting their teeth kicked in by these little motorcycles. Yeah, unfortunately, sappers on retreat not going to be able to do any damage to the crotch shooting. Other oh, side of kangaroos hits a mine, and now the flak filling comes out. Jeez. It's not looking good. Not yeah. looking good, Blind Guardian. But he is going for the Stuart, uh, the Stuart tech right now. But as long as he can just hold on to the center, um, a Stuart is a good counter to some of these vehicles. Oh, for the flag sure. Track. Oh, man. Alpenwell putting a lot of pressure on this cutoff. <laughs> this Ozzy's struggling, hiding health. in this ox hole, trying to survive these motorcycles and the barrage of flak that's coming its way. How yeah. to get out of there. But his other kangaroo squad is going to cap up this fuel, and that's really what he needs. Get something out, whether it's Stuart, a Humber. One crod goes down to the mine, you called it, so that's a, that is a really helpful uh, for Guardian. I believe it's 25 munitions for a mine. That's 25 munitions uh, well spent. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, Panzer Jaeger is coming out with the half track. Um, so Guardian is still going to have to be really careful uh, with his first vehicle that he gets out to make sure it doesn't get run down. The flak track will do well, especially if he starts to get some of the upgrades to it, like the vehicle survivability yeah. and penetration. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the army deficit here of like what what they have in terms of what they have out. I mean, I mean, look at the DAC, such such good composition and balance between vehicles and and infantry and team weapons and meanwhile blind guardian is still sticking to his his three kangaroos a machine gun and a sapper squad uh now just now getting the light tank out which should hopefully help you know whittle down some of this army for him to get some map control back i mean because look at this it's like a sea of blue here yeah i'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't pursue harder with the flag track i feel like they probably could have gotten a wipe on that kangaroo yeah, for sure. But he might be concerned about mines. He already lost one crotch season. That he knows that it's about Stuart time, which he is correct to think. Yeah. Honestly, I'm impressed with Guardian's ability to kind of salvage this and continue to fight uh, and claw out of his base. Um, he doesn't really have any even soft counters to these vehicles, but he's done a good job uh, maintaining at least a little bit of map presence. And now that he's got a Stuart out, uh, now this flak track is potentially in danger. Oh, look, oh it's hammer time, baby. Look at it coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we don't even know what's coming. Look at that. Hello. First shot. Now, here come the Panzer Jaegers. Still rolling up like, consider this your eviction notice. Goodbye. <laughs> it's hilarious. Now he's going to be able to put the hurt on the deck here. Blind Guardian really did hold out on that. I mean, look at his ability to just stay cool as a cucumber here. Just absolutely taking blow after blow, but still keeping his hands up. Yeah. Now, this is the problem, though, because Alpenwell has had both high uh, munitions points and three fuels, at least three fuels, for the vast majority of this match so far. Mm -hmm. And that's problematic when you start thinking about the uh, the DAX late-game armor, especially the Tiger. Mm -hmm. And he's already getting his P Panzer Command out. Just now, just now dropped it, so P3s are on its way, and he just barely got out his first Stuart. So the way that he definitely could be able to survive this, in my opinion, is getting some team weapons out, really hunkering down on his cutoff, and just slowly starting to expand. Yeah, I, I would love to see a two-pounder out. Although, at this point, you might be better off investing in a six-pounder, because like you said, you know the heavier armor's got to be coming. He's doing a good job of kind of taking his time and making sure all of his units are available. I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm a little shocked at how little veterancy the Aussies have. Um, they scale significantly with veterancy, so that that's kind of a, 
annoying, I guess, if you're Blind Guardian that you don't have that. More well, think of it this way. Well. These Australians just been getting shot at this entire time. I mean, they they spent most of this match just like kissing dirt <laughs> from all the from all the suppression, from the flag frilling, and the motorcycles just you know hammering them away. So I could see why they have no opportunities to get any like you know marksmen or or kills or anything like that. But you would think with all this damage they've taken, they'd have a little bit more veterancy than that. Here you go. So the flag tracks fully healed. Blind Guardian did get a two pounder out. These Panzer Jaegers are going to be a problem for the steward if it over pursues. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's scary as hell. Yeah, Guardian's smart though, he knows this is coming. Mm -hmm. And so he's not over committing. Okay, they're, they're revealed now. Yeah. Back oh, the two pounder on the back. That's oh. going to be great. Oh, it's going to go down. It shoots too fast. And it does. It wow, is. what a shot. I did Somebody not get think that, that man a medal. Let's go. <laughs> wow, two pounder immediately plays off. Pays off. Alpha is going to counter by getting a P3 out here. That's a lot of infantry. He needs that Vickers over there. Mm -hmm. And he's rotating it right now. Perfect. Aussies are in a good spot now. This is much more their fight against, especially Panzer Jaegers and Panzer Pioneers, and just one squad of Bursas. Uh, the Aussies are going to win this engagement as long as they stay in cover. Now look at the map down below. Pretty much even 50-50 split. Not necessarily in fuel, but in map control. Oh my... This, stealth, I just looked up at the top. The KD is insane, though. You Alp see that? <laughs> Alpenwell 24-7, yeah. I tell you, these Aussies are getting their butts kicked, man. So P3 comes out just as the second Stewart's about to hit the field. Oh. Prod shoots and hits a mine, but the veterancy actually saves it from being totally killed, and it'll be able to heal itself up there shortly. Unfortunate for sure. Man, for Australians having you know spiders the size of dish plates, they uh they you think they'd be tougher against these uh these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this one oh. squad's got to get out of there. It's about to get. Oh no, oh, it does Retreat. go down. Oh no. The multiple engagement is just too much. One Aussie squad is going to retreat. Second steward on the field. The stewards are going to react to the P3. Yeah, two pounder doing work in the back. It's got a really nice cone of fire. It does. He needs to, he needs to rotate that armor around. Wow, stewards reliably penetrating the P3. That's that's amazing. Even after the stewards were nerfed, I don't know if you guys remember earlier, Co, but stewards used to be a menace. A menace. I think they still are. I, I don't think they got nerfed as much as people think. Uh, especially now with the uh, the resource change, so they get out sooner. They're still oh, very oh, dangerous. Nice Machine gun coming in clutch, pinning those Panzer Jaegers. That Stuart needs to get out of there. Oh, but see, this is the difference between me and this high level player. I would just immediately send the Stuart back to base, scared that it was going to get killed. But he knows that those are the only anti uh, tank besides the P3 that he has, so he can keep the skirt in the fight a little bit longer. And the P3 pushes on the Vickers and is dissuaded by the two pounder. He takes a couple of good shots, but actually doesn't pen the P3's armor. The two pounder is going to move up and again take a shot, this time pending the P3. Zappers repairing the one steward in the rear. I'm yeah. actually interested to find out if these Australians are going to throw up um, that big uh, howitzer in the middle. Um, he's already done a bit of uh, some crazy plays that I've seen already going Australian infantry for his, for his main line, but I wonder if he's going to try even crazier stuff and put the howitzer smack dab in the middle. You mean the 17 pounder that they get? Yeah, yeah, the bin placement. I think that'd be an interesting tactic. I think this map's a little wide for that. Right? Like, so, I guess it'd be good against the Tiger because you would really limit the Tiger's ability to rotate. For um, sure. But this map does play wide. It's basically three big lanes. And so, a uh, 17 pounder, while it hits hard, can't cover enough of the map, in my opinion, for it to be really viable in a 1v1. Stewart's push off the crowd shoots and Kangaroo's capping up that center fuel. Oh man, another MG34, and these Kangaroos are forced off. Stewards are going to try to force them out. The Panzerators are going to rotate to drive off the Stewards. That building is not looking healthy either. A few more hits and that machine gun will just be instantly dead. He could use the two-pounder to shoot the building, try to knock it down faster. 
which I think he might try and do. Oh no, he's backing it up here. He knows the pan the uh, Panzer Pioneers are pushing. Yeah. P3, getting aggressive, looking for the two pounder. And the Stewart are gonna rotate back. Deciding he likes life and backing right back up to the fuel point. <laughs> This, uh, this crowd shoots and still proving useful. Uh, just insane mobility and capping. So like second, going right back to square one. Yeah, second P3 on the way out for Alphamwell. Second two pounder out now for Blind Guardian. Stewart takes some damage, but uh, still in the fight. And the second two pounder is going to make a big difference. Vickers. My favorite part about the two pounder here is just that there's one person always riding it. So like that person in the back is just struggling to push his fat friend there. <laughs> just chilling in the chair. <laughs> I just love that so much. Yeah, that that is funny. Oh man. I tried to zoom in on it and uh and whiffed a little bit. There we go. One guy who just gets to sit and watch. He just <laughs> Onwards, servants. Awesome. So it looks like we have two opposing pushes getting planned out here. So, Blind Guardian making a big push uh, to the center left of the map towards the north side. Meanwhile, Alpenwell pushing out to the uh, the southern beach here. Two Panzers, two P3s, Panzer Pioneers, and then the crowd just to cap up. This Vickers is done for. Yeah. Oh no. And I think this is the right play from Alphamel at this point. Trade that central fuel for the two extra VPs. Yeah. And getting this machine gun off the field too. Yeah, Vickers is done. I wonder if he takes it. Oh, this building's still holding strong. Sapper's trying to push the machine gun. Oh, oh no, there, there goes. goes the machine gun. Yep. Big showdown in the center here between these two P3s and the two Stewarts, but these two pounders are, are already faced in support. And so all the P3s managed to do is some damage to the kangaroos. But they smartly don't push any further. They don't want the smoke from the two pounders. Not at all. Not at all. A third they fire faster P3 than my units out. die in my matches. <laughs> exactly. Looks like I was right too. Um, he actually opted to take the Vickers, even though it's honestly not the best of the machine guns. He did steal the Vickers instead. At this stage Con in the game, you'll take any sort of free unit, especially something like that that can, uh, when he's got three squads of Aussies on the field, any machine gun, anything with suppression can really just turn an engagement for you. For sure. And contrary to popular belief, um, sharing is not caring in war. You're supposed to take the other people's lunch money, take the shoes, Take the bike, everything. Although if you read All Quiet on the Western Front, taking someone's boots is not a good idea. <laughs> you are correct. That was a seriously great film, by the way. I did love that. <laughs> MG's trade and fire in the uh, Northeast. Brad Schutzen takes the fuel in the second VP and gets away. And it looks like we have an engagement prepped up here between these stewards and these P3s. Oh my god. Look at oh, that. And one steward no. immediately goes down. Great volley from both the Panzerjägers and the P3s, just evaporating that Stuart tank. Yep. See you later, alligator. A third P3 on the field. It's starting to hit critical mass here. This is where Dak really shines whenever they have all these medium tanks out. Yeah. And so we've got, I think it's a Matilda being built by Blind Guardian uh, from his tier four, which is a better answer, but I think it's going to struggle. Uh, against this swarm of P3s, especially with its slow speed. Oh, as no. long as he keeps it within the cone of arcs of the, uh, oh, oh no. Mine hit. He needs these two pounders to pay off, and Alpha exactly is not right. cooperating. Mm -hmm. That's oh. exactly what I was going to say. He needs those, he needs the Matilda to stay within the arc, the arc of both two pounders to absolutely hammer these P3s whenever and punish them whenever they try and push. So this is something I like here. You see the two pounders spread. Yes. That way, it basically increases the overall, you know, cone of fire, and it also decreases the chance that both will get decrewed with, like, one push or uh, one artillery barrage. And look at that. Look at the cohesion of units that uh, Blind Guardian is doing. He's actually sending both units down, uh, down south here, knowing that the bulk of his forces are north to cap up all that territory. Just the multitasking that he's doing right now. Yeah, and he actually, he has two of the three VPs right now, and uh, two of the three, or five uh, fuel points, so he's doing a decent job. 
keeping pressure on. The big thing is he needs to, to get a couple of trades his direction. Oh, this Panzer Jaeger volley. And the P3's gonna try to follow it up. But it's gonna end up getting hit by a couple of two-pounders. Oh, the two-pounders don't penetrate. And now artillery cover dropped in and the two-pounders need to relocate. Oh, machine gun at the risk of going down. Big engagement. Here comes the recon artillery. Oh, artillery cover. Oh, jeez. Does a fair amount of damage, but doesn't kill anything. Instead, these PPs are going to punish these Aussies. All right. Footgar is coming out now. I was just uh, about ready to say that. That's what he needs, man. And, 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 and uh, whatever I'm trying to say. Uh, teamwork, yeah. <laughs> Two founders, foot guards, and the Matilda should be able to make short work of these guys. I think, though, the two pounders have kind of outlived their usefulness at this point. The P3, too many of their shots are bouncing. I would like to see uh, him upgun into maybe some six pounders or a 17 pounder. Oh, this sport is getting way too big for its britches. That is upgraded tungsten ammunition from the P3s. That is not going to feel good. Yeah. It does back away, but the smoke from the, that the P3 has dropped a while ago prevents the two-pounders from getting involved. Mm -hmm. And now we have the Armored Reserves upgrade for Alpenwell, which means the next tank we see from him could very well be a Tiger. Mm -hmm. We did get that audio cue, too. Tiger tanks are the scariest things. Now, you want to you wanna know what makes Stealth Elf piss himself? Seeing a Tiger tank in his 1v1 game, because that's when you know he messed up. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> looks like the field control ran away from me, boys. It's time to die. That's what I feel like. Oh. oh my gosh, they can't even get close. Like, you see, he just he just roams them around in a little death cloud. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's going to be really, really hard for Blind Guardian to break through this P3 wall here that he has set up. And look, here comes the Jaegers as well. Oh, he's going to have the same thing happen to his Stuart. He better back it up. He doesn't see it. He's got he he's microing too many engagements, but the Panzer Jaegers do bounce away. Well, that was a mistake him. there. He could have he could have definitely finished it off. Yeah. Ozzy's flanking the machine gun north side, getting some uh, better mouth map control here. Nice. And so he's at least going to hold on to one of the VPs and get that central fuel. Krod hits another mine, but the veterans, he saves it. I don't know if they had the lottery back then, but uh, if they do, that Krod shoots and needs to go buy it, uh, like six tickets. And now we're seeing the uh, implications of that Sapper getting knocked out on retreat. Uh, he's unable to heal his, uh, his Matilda. The Stewart repairs on its own. Oh, the P3s oh, the just Aussie. annihilate the Aussies. And, and this Victor's is going to go, go down. down, too. No! <laughs> so Alphabet goes for a walking Stuka here. Oh, uh, this P3 little train. And and honestly, Alphabet is playing this really smart because he's not allowing Blind Garden to get into position to knock out one of these P3s. Mm-hmm. Walking Stuka Barrage coming in. Aiming on the foot guards. They're going to retreat, not lose any models, but they also did not recap up that fuel. Mm -mm. Oh, and Alpha These Wells. Aussies need to push forward right now to these munitions and try and circumvent that VP over on um, Alpenwell's side. That's what he needs to do right now. He needs to make sure to stop the manpower bleed and try and get, get his you know what together, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. The So Alpenwell. You can tell he's had a lot of manpower float because he even has the uh, rapid advance unlocked for his vehicles, which means his tanks can now capture. And this is really important late game if you're fighting over a final VP and you have a tiger mm -hmm. and you can just sit it on that VP and prevent your opponent from capturing it. Like, that's a Look pretty powerful Look at these stealthy Aussies here on the far, far north corner that he just planted there. <clears throat> They're just going to run back at the crotch system? I guess. I don't know what his plan is for these, but then again, I'm also not this high level. So I think the crowd shoots cool. and can see them, though, because the P3s look like they're going right for them. Oh, no. Oh, there's oh, no boys. way to get out of here. <laughs> no. That's another squad that's going to get ripe, wiped on retreat, man. Oh, no. And these and this squad of Aussies is just racked up as another death stati uh, statistic. That's un That's unfortunate. Yeah, and the P3 is going to back out. Matilda, Two Pounders, and Stuart are rotating, but they're not going to be able to catch the P3s out. No infantry presence now. He only has sappers and foot guards and one infantry section left. 
Ja. Crazy Booker enough with this deficit him. of armor, I mean, he still has a massive amount of, like, you know, like, map control for having this small amount of armor. Oh my god. That already might go like, down. That's brutal. Just gets out of there. P3 is coming to finish the job. Another Matilda. Having that front line is not a bad idea. That front armor is very hard to pin, even with the tungsten armor with P3. Yeah, that's true. What's this anthem though that he's gonna try and do deal with the P3 itself? Because right now he's just surviving it. He needs something to to, to counter it. Oh, this is another Stuart. section. Oh no, pop the smoke. He did. Oh no. Stewart's gone. Matildas are just too slow to react to, and the Panzer Jaegers are there. Yep. See how agile the DAC is with the P3s and the Jaeger blob that he's got here? I mean, that answers literally all the armor the Blind Guardian has. I mean, the Matildas are just not the move right now. Yeah, and the, the P3s with all the upgrades, they're going to penetrate. Oh, rockets coming in to force off the two-pounders. They do like oh. the Panzer Pioneers. Oh, both two-pounders get away. That's just a drop of water in the bucket, though, if you just take out one squad of... I mean, he's already rebuilding him. He's got the manpower for it, obviously. Yeah, what's crazy to me is Blind Guardian's manpower uh, income is only 187, right? So he's got only a handful of units, but all high upkeep. I'm sure the Matildas and the foot guards aren't helping. No. And so, you know, what you really need at this point is some additional infantry, and it's going to take him forever to get those out. I think it might be too little too late here. Blind Guardian has very few answers to this P3 wall, and he's just... Oh my goodness, these foot guards are just taking absolute blow after blow. He needs to go for these VPs. This It's getting critical now that he, he handles He's triple capped. He's about ready to cross into double digits. This is not looking good, especially if he has that upgrade for vehicles to be able to cap. Yeah. And, you know, I don't... I agree that he has to make progress, but I don't know what the move, the move is here. Oh... More artillery cover coming in on these Matildas. Oh, oh these, no, sappers these sappers are, are done. definitely done. Oh, oh do they get out? They get away. The Matildas just cannot stay above half health here. The response time on that artillery cover is substantial. Um, that was so quick. And it's forcing the Matildas off. And meanwhile, the P3 train is here. These foot guards probably going down on retreat as well. Just each retrain, destination, death. Oh, man. And a flak for Link for some reason. I don't know what that was, but I mean, I guess it's just suppressing the infantry that might go for the point, and that just got wiped on our tree. Yeah, the Aussies don't have any uh, air abilities, so you don't need the flak track for the anti-air. He did unlock the archer. It would be cool to see an archer in the back with Matildas in the front and try to counter these tanks. Which is is great in theory, but I mean, like his infantry, he's still he just lost another infantry squad, which is not what he needs. That Matilda is gonna go down now too after the uh, airstrike here. Oh, goodness. good use of the strafe and run, man. This commander for the DAC just has everything it needs. Mhm. Mm and this and this is exactly what I was talking about about going the Austria the Aussies for mainline infantry no snares it, it's very very um uh, strict on what it can do you can upgrade infantry sections with you know boys anti rifles and get like you know a budget great value Jaeger squads oh that's it man that's the deciding factor there's no way he's coming back from losing both PTs there's the archer yep but it's it's not a close combat unit it's gonna get one really awesome shot off and then it's oh, gonna go down no. here. It makes all oh. its shots. Oh, there goes oh, the archer. No. no, that's it, man. And that's GG. the GG. Wow, what a match. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. So, to kick us off, as always, going to go through the build order here. So, starting with Finn Golfin, the UK player, locked in the Australian Defense Battle Group right away. He went had his sappers, got a Vickers out, and then with three Aussie light infantry squads, which I know Stealth can't wait to talk about. After that, <laughs> he teched his Stuart, uh, got two of those, two of the two-pound AT guns, then a Matilda, a squad of foot guards, a second Matilda, and very at the very end of the game, he got an Archer tank destroyer out. Uh, for Alpenwell, playing as the DAC, immediately locked in the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. 
right? So he started with his Panzer Pioneers, he got a squad of Bersalieri out, and then he went for two Kradschutzen. Um, and so what I thought was interesting, a lot of people feel like just because they start with this battle group, they need to lean into the Bursas. Uh, and I think Oppenwell did a good job of not relying on the Bursas too much and, and really just had the one squad. He goes into two MG34s instead, and then a flak for laying half track. So he's really able to zone out the map. Um, from there, he gets two Panzer Jaeger squads to include one with a half track, then three Panzer threes, a walking Stuka, and then finally uh, an additional flak for laying right at the end of the game there. Uh, probably had a Tiger coming if the game went long enough, but he's able to close it out. So. With that kind of quick build order overview, Stealth, what you got for me? Oh my gosh, dude. So I actually realized something as you were talking. I'm getting giddy just thinking about it. So here's the thing. Um, obviously, Blind Guardian here going for three Aussies, which I you already told I was excited to talk about. Um, first of all, Dak, right? Vehicle heavy, vehicle heavy, vehicle heavy. And the fact that you went three Australian infantry sections that have no AT answers or an option to go AT is just already putting yourself on not only the back foot, but you might as well be on the ground at that point. I mean, it's ridiculous to try and like r deal with that amount of stuff um, with no answer. But as, your po as you pointed out about the Bursa and leading into them, the Bursas don't have anti-tank either. And here's the thing, Alpenwell built one of them and then went... We use that other manpower into more impactful units. And I think that if Blind Guardian would have done that same thing, one, maybe two Aussies with maybe one infantry section with boys would have completely turned it. I mean, the map control thing was a huge, huge problem. And with that kind of like uh, map presence, that would have been perfect for him to have some kind of AT answer with the infantry section and stuff. What do you think? Yeah. And so we talked about this a little bit and it's kind of challenging. And like we have the benefit of obviously seeing both sides at the same time, right? And seeing through yeah. the fog of war. Um, I don't know how obvious it was to Blind Guardian that he had, uh, that Oppenwell had two crowd shoots in help, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think he only has one, then maybe you're like, ah, I don't really need to invest in AT. I, I tell you what, like you pointed this out. When I am up against the DAC, like I already bias my build towards anti vehicle. So maybe guardian was trying something here with the aussies like hey i want to see if i can pivot this into uh you know against the DAC. um that'd be my kind of guess because otherwise it doesn't seem like the build necessarily makes a ton of sense early um but yeah so you need some sort of soft counter so initially like a dingo uh is great at running down those crowd shoots in, right because even with the boys at rifle Crowd is going to take a salvo and then back off and you know Alpenwell's micro is too good to let it just get overrun like that Oh, for sure. Uh, so oh, great point. So Dingo, maybe a Humber, right? If you look at the build order, he's got Sapper, Vickers, Aussies, and then nothing until Stewart. Um, and so maybe, and he ended up getting two of the Stewarts, and and we've talked about this before, like the over reliance on bridging units. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the Stewarts are good, but all of that fuel that you invest in them keeps you from getting your tanks out, right? And you saw mm -hmm. the Matildas really late, but yeah, I I think a Dingo, a Humber potentially like one boys uh, rifle section or getting a two pounder out as soon as you have the command points for it just gives you it, it you know at least keeps the crowd shits in at bay um, and then keeps the flak filling from being able to roam all the way across the map constantly because that and just steal all of your like all of your infantry's lunch money man I mean they were running away from mama constantly throughout the entire map and that was my that was one of my other three points that i had was the humber i think the humber would have been perfect in this scenario and for the reason of the dingo's great but the humber's better and like chasing the crowd like you could chase the crowds so the bikes can't go nowhere it it can't go toe to toe by itself against the flak filling but it can do a lot of damage to it and obviously it's gonna it's gonna uh mess up the 250 as well um, another point that I wanted to point out was about the Vickers. I don't know if you guys caught it, but Blind Guardian lost his Vickers on the south side of the map, um, halfway through, uh, to a to the P to the P three cloud of death, and <laughs> I think that was a huge turning point because then then he had absolutely zero answer to the Panzer Jaegers just walking up, absolutely slapping around the Stewart, and then just walking away like nothing happened and just waddled away. But honestly, I think the Vickers loss and having the Archer. Uh, so so late in the game because like like we were talking about um shark with the with the matilda and the archer you were telling me a little bit about how the timing is a little late could you tell me more about that yeah so the archer i think is still like six command points i'm trying to remember the uh, I, yeah i think there are two command points in front of it as well so basically eight command points if you focus on that side of the tree 
so it does come out relatively late um there's some potential value you got a matilda out if you can get the archer um and it can be difficult to like stay on top of your command points when you're having to micro multiple engagements at the same time yeah the archer does a obviously does a ton of damage it's a mobile 17 pounder right um, mm -hmm. But you saw how quickly it died when the P3s focus fire on it. So it yeah. has to sit in the back and you have to have units that can screen for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Matildas work great for that. Infantry sections with snares also work great for that, right? Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. And that's what they were lacking. So the archer, you know, maybe maybe the archer turns an engagement. But um, that's the big thing here is like you're so far on the back foot already for, for Blind Guardian for Finn Golfing. Like you're so far on the back foot that now you have to really hope your opponent makes a mistake, right? You keep your units together, right? And you try to lure them into an engagement where you can chunk down and kill a P3 before he knows what happened, right? Kind of like what happened to the first steward. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and Alpenwell, mistake is not in his dictionary, man. I mean, you saw how beautifully he played that map. I mean, oh my gosh, just expertly i mean even better than i could ever dream of doing i mean whenever i face my opponents i mean they they do make mistakes and i do too but i mean alpenwell was just like a well-oiled machine man yeah and it, to be honest with you like that's all of these players in the top 100 like mm -hmm. they're not going to make unforced errors um and so i think if the shoe had been on the other foot if engulf and it had a big advantage you would see seen the same thing right oh for like, sure you you don't want to be in that position where you have to like hope for your opponent to make a mistake Ideally, uh, and this is something that the, the best players do routinely, is they use the really high-end abilities of their battle group to kind of force an engagement that the, their opponent thinks they should win into one that they lose. Right? Exactly. Think the loiter, the cover artillery, etc. So, yeah. um, and then Alpenwell did that <laughs> at the end of the <laughs> game there. Insult to injury, knocked out the last uh, those two Matildas, and that was it. Oh, for sure. And one of my, I just want to close out from my end for this. Like one of my favorite uh, chess players of all time, Gotham Chess, he made a really good point that I always stick with when I play games is you don't want to make hope moves. You want to make, uh, you know, like uh, astounding moves, you know, like definitive moves, not hope moves. Like I don't hope that my opponent's going to go here. I know they're going to go here because I do this. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. it's all intentional and that's how you win games. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. You don't want to do something and be like, well, if my opponent is dumb, this will work. You have yeah. to give them the benefit of the doubt. And mm -hmm. then if you're like me, you give them the benefit of the doubt, and then somehow they get seven Greyhounds, and they roll through your base and destroy everything, and you lose anyway. So, um, no, that that's not a specific example for any reason. It didn't just Of happen course not. No, <laughs> no, not at all. It didn't happen, I promise. Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. Well, Shark, thank you so much for having me on, man. This game was like, oh, oh, hats off to Appenwell, hats off to Blind Guardian for doing, for holding out for such a long time on this hard game. But it was such a beautiful one to cast, and I appreciate you bringing me back on. Yeah, of course, dude. It's always always fun having you here. You bring such an awesome vibe. Um, yeah, big thanks to Appenwell and Golfin for sending this one in. Really, really awesome game. I'd like to see your rematch. I think these guys uh, probably play each other quite a bit. But, oh they deserve one come on i gotta see it i gotta see it again that yeah. was too good absolutely all right well thanks brother uh that's all for us here gents uh have a good one